is uh, real estate the next shoe to drop in the aftermath of what we saw with the banks? Uh, the challenges in real estate are going to be tied to the economy. So it all depends on uh, do we have a recession, how deep will the recession be, how long will interest rates be high. Um, and the answer to that question will determine you know, the, the challenges that the real estate industry will face in the quarters ahead. We had a Bloomberg report saying that uh, vacancy rates uh, for office properties in Manhattan were at a record high right now. I think something like 15 percent, something like that. Yeah. Uh, how much of that's because of the economic downturn and how much of it's because people just aren't coming back to the office, they're working from home? Yes, I think that's a big misperception uh, in the market today. The office business faces two significant headwinds. One is a slowdown in economic conditions and the other is work from home. When you have a slowdown in the economy, uh, businesses are uh, more challenged in terms of their P&L and they do things to cut costs and you see layoffs going on almost every day uh, right now and as you have layoffs companies take less space uh, or they put sublease space back on the market. Uh, and by the way this is no different than any other downturn that we've ever experienced. Office and many forms of real estate are economically sensitive. So I think in the premium end of the market uh, what's impacting uh, our leasing activity today is much more the economic conditions than work from home. And the evidence of that that I would give you is in 2022, last year, our company leased nearly 6 million square feet of space, uh, which is basically at 95 percent of our long-term averages. And if you think about it, last year, you know, interest rates um, started to go up, but the economy was m much more solid and there were a lot fewer people in the office. Now you move to 23, office leasing is slowing down, the economy's worse, and there are actually more people working in the office. So what is your experience at BXP, particularly in the tech area? Because we've heard about a lot of layoffs in tech, downsizing in tech. Are you seeing that in your office situation? Yes, well, that has an impact. The technology firms, particularly the larger ones, were important net absorbers of office space since the global financial crisis. And as you know, over the last six months, many of those companies, their uh, pr uh, growth has slowed uh, and they're focused uh, very much on their profitability. And they, many of them have done layoffs uh, and many of them have put sublease space on the market. And by the way, they've all announced some form of return to the office uh, as a result of this as well. How does this affect valuations? Because uh, uh, we have, uh, I guess, NetCrief it's called, which gives us appraisal yes. uh, valuations. And we got a Bloomberg B-REIT uh, index, a REIT uh, office property index, which, yeah. is not, which is down a lot more than right. the appraisals. So how can you get your arms around exactly what's happening with valuations in real estate? Yeah. So let's divide it between the private market and the public market. On the private market, it's hard to determine value because there are very few transactions going on right now. Uh, interest rates have come up, uh, off, bids are lower, and sellers are so far unprepared to accept those bids. So where is uh, real estate trading? It's trading in the public market, the REITs, as you mentioned. Uh, and if you compare these uh, two areas, you know, office REITs today are off you know, 50 plus or minus percent from peaks in March of last year. But the NACREF index, which is appraisal based that uh, dictates where private market values are, it's only down about five to six percent uh, from peak. Higher interest rates obviously affect the economy, slow the economy down, may affect uh, vacancy levels. Uh, it also affects financing uh, for these yeah. properties. How is that playing out right now? For example, if you're putting up a new building, uh, I understand you have construction financing. That's yeah. short term. You've got to turn that into longer term at some time. Are you in the process right now of refinancing and how does that, how does that work? Yes. Well, financing is harder to get today um, because of concerns about real estate and also uh, buildings have to have strong cash flows to support the higher interest rates uh, that are associated with financing. From our company's standpoint, most of the financing we do is in the bond market. So we're a uh, uh, an investment grade um, uh, issuer of unsecured bonds and that market is open to us albeit at higher spreads. Uh, we do have some mortgage financing and I do think mortgages are available uh, to office real estate but the building has to be well leased, it's got to be of high quality and it has to be owned by a strong sponsor. What about the high quality you just mentioned because yeah. I've heard conflicting things that there's a huge difference between A buildings and B's and C's or some people say basically it, uh, it applies across the board. Yes, now this is a very important issue when you think about office real estate. Last year I mentioned all the leasing success that we had yet we saw all these reports showing many of our cities being 15, 20, 25 percent vacant. 
And then an important measure in office real estate is net absorption. This is how much um, the occupied space goes up and down in those segments. And if you look at the premier workplaces for the last two years, uh, ended the uh, year end 2022, uh, the premier workplaces had a positive 7 million square feet of net absorption, where everything else was down 25 million square feet. So there's a very, in all the years that I've been doing this, this is one of the strongest moves towards uh, quality office and real estate that I've seen. What about prime cities, if I can put yeah. it that way? Yeah. How, what's the geographic dispersion? We hear reports of, for example, San Francisco really struggling. New York maybe not doing so well. And then yeah. There's a big move into Austin, into Miami, places yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, there is uh, some migration out of the coastal cities into lower tax states and cities like in Florida and in Texas, but there's also in-migration from employees in uh, New York and San Francisco as well. So um, I do think and I believe in the long-term vibrancy of uh, cities like New York and Boston and San Francisco. What about the ecosystem more broadly? At this point, are places like BXP and others mm -hmm. pulling back on future development of properties, which can affect things like construction, construction yeah. workers, employment? Yeah. Well, with the slowdown in demand, clearly there's going to be a slowdown in development. And that's one thing that'll help uh, owners like ourselves because there's going to be less supply in the future because construction's being pulled back. We do have sites and we would consider uh, future development, but it has to be de-risked. And for us, that means uh, pre-leased. What's the biggest opportunity for BXP right now? Yeah. And is it, in fact, part because of the valuation question, there may be some bargains out there at yeah. the moment? No, I think that will come. I mean, a couple of things I would mention. We have also been, in addition to our premier workplace business, we've also been developing life science assets. We're building a large lab building for AstraZeneca in Cambridge. We're converting uh, a large building in Cambridge for the Broad Institute. So that's an area of growth for us. Another area of growth for us is simply leasing our portfolio, increasing the occupancy, because we're at about 88 or 89 percent occupied today, and that will uh, grow our income stream. And then I agree with you. I think as this uh, downturn unfolds, I think additional investment opportunities will present themselves to strong players like ourselves.